Welcome to my lecture online. Before we get into a little bit more detail about Kepler's laws, let's do a quick review of them. Well, Kepler, by using Tycho Brahe's notebook with all the information about the location of the planets that Tycho Brahe had very carefully assembled over a period of about 20 years of observation, Kepler was able to use that information to determine the details about the orbit of the planets. And he came up with these three conclusions, which we now know as the three laws of Kepler. The first one was that he realized that the planets did not travel in circles around the sun, but actually in elliptical orbits with the sun of one of the foci. So here's a neat little picture. An ellipse typically has two foci, unless it's a complete circle, then the two foci come together and form a single point, the center of the circle. But for an ellipse, there are two foci. You place the sun at one of them, and then the planets will then revolve around the sun, sometimes being closer and sometimes being farther away. At the closest approach, this distance is called the minimum radius, and at the longest approach, this is called the maximum radius. The major axis, the line drawn from one end to the other end, if you then divide it by two, that will become the average distance between the planet and the sun, which is also known as half of the major axis of the, or the semi-major axis. The second law was that he also realized that planets moved faster when they were close to the sun and slower when they're far away. Of course, he may not have realized why yet, he just realized they did. And of course, now we understand that it's because of the conservation of the angular momentum. And we'll get into that detail later. But then what this really means is if you have an imaginary line between the planet and the sun, and we allow the planet to move forward in its orbit for a certain fixed amount of time, that planet will then sweep a certain amount of area, let's call that A1. Then when the planet is farther away from the sun, it will travel slower, but in the same time period, even though it doesn't travel as far, the area swept up will be exactly the same as it was over here. So the areas will always be equal in the same amount of time. The third law was that the ratio of the period squared divided by the average distance between the planet and the sun cubed remain the constant. And it turns out that that constant will be equal to 1 if you let the period be in years and A, the average distance, be in astronomical units. And we'll get into that in just a moment. So that means that if we have this as the average distance, we calculate or we measure the amount of time that it takes for the planet to go around, and then we know that these two ratios for any planet in the solar system will always be the same. As an example, we now know that Jupiter is about 5.2 astronomical units away from the Sun, and if we then want to use that to calculate the period, we can do that as follows. We can then say that this is equal to, so this is equal to 1 when P is in years and A is in astronomical units. So let's go ahead and check that out. So the period will be equal to, or let's go like this, we can say that the period squared will be equal to a cubed, or the period is equal to the square root of a cubed, which is equal to the square root of 5.2 cubed. And of course, that will be the period in years. And then using our calculator, if I can find it, there it is. Sometimes it's hidden behind some papers. So here we go, 5.2 raised to the third power. 5.2 to the third power equals, and then we take the square root of that, and we get 11.86 years. So the period would be equal to 11.86 years, which is really close to the actual period of Jupiter. Now, of course, Kepler used it the other way around. Once he understood that relationship, he could find the period of planets by simply looking at Tycho Brahe's notes, or you can measure it yourself. You just kind of keep track of where the planet is at. And after a while, you know how long it takes for the planet to go around the sun. You can then use that to find the distance between the sun and that planet. And that, of course, how Kepler's third law was first used. So that's, again, a quick review of the three laws of Kepler. Now let's start using them for some very interesting information that we can glean from that understanding of Kepler's laws. That's how it is.